everyone. I'm excited to let you know my debut cookbook, Easy, is out now. It is packed full of simple, mouthwatering, accessible, delicious recipes that you're going to come back to time and time again. You are going to love it. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Baber and welcome to Sparks Live. This is a fresh market update special. I was due to be joined by Lucy tonight, however, due to unforeseen circumstances, she can't be with us, but don't worry, she is okay. Now, talking about the food, I'm gonna cook a couple of lovely recipes from fresh market update. But before we get to the food, we've got our Sparks Live competition for you. All you need to do is let us know in the comments below uh, and to the email address that's in the comments below, the favorite product that you bought from M&S Food in April. That's all you have to do. Let us know your favorite purchase from M&S Food during April to win a 50 pound voucher. And we're gonna get straight into the food. So these are my meltingly tender lamb flatbreads. This is something that I cooked up in St. Ab in Scotland last year, and I'll always remember it. We cooked this up on my 30th birthday, and I thought, why not do a nice summery lamb recipe, because the sun is shining outside, and lamb, we've just probably eaten a lot of it for Easter. We don't just have to cook lamb, legs of lamb, shoulders of lamb for hours in the oven. You can cook it nice and quickly like a steak and do something really, really summery and vibrant with it. So it wouldn't be a lamb flatbread without the flatbread. We've got a few options for you tonight. So we've got these garlic ones, uh, which I've got on the platter here. Um, absolutely delicious, to be fair. Tuck into them without any lamb on it. It's incredible. We've got a gluten-free option. These garlic and cheese flatbreads, lovely addition to the gluten-free range. I really like them. So that's perfect if you can't eat gluten. And then this is what I used in Scotland last year. These pizza style flatbreads, they're absolutely massive and that's enough to serve two and you can almost fold it up like a kebab. We're gonna do one of each tonight. So first thing you need to do, make sure your oven is on and warmed up and these go in about 180 degrees just to warm them through. So let's get them in the oven. Any questions tonight, get them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Let's get our extra virgin olive oil flatbread in there. And I will be giving you a reminder later on before the competition closes. Look at that, looks great. Th this is such a nice recipe to serve up for guests or do in the garden, bit of our fresco dining. One of the crew, give me a shout in about eight minutes, would you, for that flatbread so I don't burn it? No one's paying attention behind there. There you go. That's it, right. So onto the lamb. Cooking the lamb, we've got to make sure it is at room temperature before we cook it. Treat this as you would like a nice piece of steak. And the reason we bring meat up to room temperature before we cook it is because we want it to cook evenly. If that comes out of the fridge, you're gonna be left with a really cold center and the outside will be sort of getting on the way for burnt before the insides cook through, if that makes sense. So if you bring it to room temperature, it cooks nice and evenly. So I've got a griddle on, nice and hot. If you're cooking along, get your griddle on, really quite hot at home. If you've watched before, we have set the fire alarms off, so I'm gonna try my best tonight not to do that. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna season the lamb, a bit on each side. And I like to serve this pink. It's such a nice way to eat lamb. Touch of salt, touch of pepper. You'd be quite generous with the seasoning. I mean, you could add any spices or anything on there, to be honest. But when the lamb is this good, you really don't need to do much to it. And just a drizzle of oil over the top of the lamb like that. And then let's just make sure our pan is on hot enough. Mm. Got to say, I think lamb is one of my favorite meats especially now spring coming into summer. This would be perfect on the barbecue as well. We've just had the ingredients up. Can we get the method back up on the screen? Method up there. So we're gonna oil and season the lamb steaks, which we've done. We've got our frying pan, barbecue, a griddle, really nice and hot. It's gonna take two or three minutes on each side. When it's cooked, we're gonna let them rest and then we'll make a bit of salad and some M&S collection tatsiki to go with that on the top. So, right, let's, let's get on with the cooking. If you don't hear a sizzle, don't put it in the pan. So I'm hearing a nice sizzle on there. That goes in, couple of minutes, 
just until it's caramelized. Don't overcook the lamb or it's going to be really tough. I want it nice and blushing pink. Now while our lamb's cooking a bit of salad to go with it, I'm just going for classic iceberg lettuce. I love the crunch on this. Also great value for money. Doesn't cost a lot, but it does deliver on flavor and texture. You can't go wrong with a bit of it. And do get your questions in tonight. I'm just gonna slice this up. The smell of that lamb cooking away, another level. And I know on chopping the lettuce, I don't know if we can get a little close up in on here. Whenever you're slicing stuff, just sort of top tip is to use your knuckles as a guide so you can see that I'm using the knife and resting it down the side of my knuckle so I don't chop my fingers off. Like that, and just run our blade all the way through there. Like so, dead easy. We've got our bread cooking away in the oven. Have a look at this. Mm. Starting to get some lovely char marks on the lamb. I don't know if we can see in there. Look at that. Look at the colour on there and the smell. And when you're cooking the lamb like this, uh, James wants to know how do we know when it's cooked? So, because it's a really quite thin steak, it's going to be 90 seconds to two minutes on each side. But generally, once you've got that colour, it's going to be time to turn it over. It's almost telling you when it's ready to turn. And the other way is by touch. So at the minute, it's still really quite soft. The more it cooks, the firmer it's going to get. So if it feels like the side of your cheek, then you're looking at sort of a medium. And if it feels like your forehead, you've gone a bit too far and it's well done. So it's always better to take it out the pan. You can always put it back in there if you cut into it and it's not quite cooked enough for you. But don't be scared to cook it pink because to me that is when the flavor is at its very very best okay and i can smell that garlic flatbread cooking away so we've got our lettuce chopped you can put any salad you want here some tomatoes anything like that and we've got these pickled red onions one of my favorite products it adds so much zing and also a nice bit of color and we've got that creamy rich tzatziki and that just gives you that acidity to cut through it all. And it was last July that we filmed this for Fresh Market Update and such a great recipe. The other recipe we did when we filmed this was this spiced cottage pie. So some beautiful lamb mince, almost like a keema curry, which is a mince curry, a little bit of tikka paste. You can put some veggies in there, a bit of mashed potato on the top, a nice spicy spin on a British classic. And Fresh Market Update will go back out on the TVs this week, so you're getting a bit of an exclusive about that. We've got a load of new locations lined up, some incredible recipes, really simple, all about showcasing that amazing quality that you buy from M&S. And one thing that really came across to me meeting the farmers, producers, suppliers is that seasonal vegetables, especially in fruits, it's a really easy equation to get your head around. It tastes better when it's in season, it actually costs less. So if we all buy more seasonal British produce, we're getting more flavor and we're also getting it at a better price. So make sure you're enjoying your food seasonally. And I also think eating with the seasons is a nice way to eat because you look forward to things like this asparagus I've got on the table here. It's a short season, look forward to it when it's in its season, eat it when it's at its best and then look forward to it again next year. That's I think the philosophy we should all live by and support these incredible suppliers and producers because there's so much passion that's gone into creating this perfect lamb steak or some asparagus or whatever that product might be. Let's have a little look at that. Give it a turn if it needs it. Just the colour you get from doing it on the griddle is something else. Mm. And you'll notice that I seasoned the lamb and I actually oiled the lamb rather than the pan uh, because if you put the oil into the pan, you can actually burn the oil before the lamb even gets into it. So there's a top tip, oil the meat rather than the pan. Helen wants to know, can you use any other types of lettuce? Absolutely, don't feel like you need to stick to an iceberg lettuce, a gem lettuce, whatever you've got basically salad wise in the fridge. We shouldn't be wasting anything, I'm a big 
believer in no waste in the kitchen use up whatever you've got to hand if you've got some tomatoes in the fridge tonight get them in there if you've got a bit of pepper some cucumber and also whatever you like the taste of mm. right let's get our lamb out and i just think the color that we've got on there so simple to cook it off like this and for james that was asking before but how do you know when it's cooked you can still feel a little bit of give in there and it's really important that we rest our lamb for pretty much as long as you've cooked it so if you've cooked that for two minutes on each side rest it for four minutes if we cut into that lamb now the juice is going to run all over the board and we're going to be left with a less juicy bit of meat so it's worth the wait i'm telling you all right let's get our lettuce over there keep an eye on our breads how long have we had on them let's have a look mm. about time there we go let's get them out the oven so simple and the smell of that garlic one that's a bit of me that is right out we come let's lift that onto our serving board i'm going to do a couple here that's nice and hot and then the collection tatsiki this is such a nice product sort of a taste of grease in your own home it's really rich and creamy there's cucumber there's mint in there it's the ultimate dip and then just start to spread some of this and I mean be generous with it you're at home don't be shy with it mm. it's like a taste of your holidays at home and let me know as well in the comments what did you cook this Easter what were you cooking for your family your friends I'd love to know what that was spread that up all the way at the edges we've got a little bit of our lettuce on the top nice bit of color bit of green you eat with your eyes first look at that and then we'll come back to that because that still needs to rest we've got our pickled red onions at the ready and then let's get our second piece of bread up and running so this is more kebab style so when we filmed this last year the crew went absolutely crazy for these and I'm sure they will in here today as well. Anyone hungry? Feeling it. Feeling it. Right. So you can do sort of half per portion, I think is the best way to do this. Half a bread per person. Then you can fold it up and dive right into it. So let's grab our tatsiki. We can do a couple on there like that. Plenty of that on there. And like I say, any veg, any salad that you've got. I think the key thing here is the quality of the ingredients. It is so, so simple. It's all about the lamb. Shop-bought breads, delicious. Bit of salad, bit of this. You really can't go wrong. Right, that's, I'm going to get another pot of that open. And this I know that is Stuart, the CEO of Marks & Spencer's, one of his favourite products. And it really is amazing. Plenty of that. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than this as well. If you want to rustle something up for your friends or a quick bite of dinner after work in the garden. Look at that. A little bit of lettuce on the top. Like so. Mm. And then onto our lamb. So... Whenever you're chopping your meat up, you want to cut it against the grain because that's going to give you the most tender bite. If you think about the grains of a piece of meat, almost like my fingers there, if you cut along with the grain, you've got these long strands, but if you cut against it, you're going to be chewing through the grain, if that makes sense. And it just means you get a meltingly tender piece of meat. So the little tips like that make all the difference when it comes down to, to cooking at home. Look at that in there. Blushing pink in the middle. That for me is perfect. I don't want it walking off the plate. I still want it nicely cooked, but just blushingly pink. Bit of that. And slice this up. Mm. You see this on the close up. Just look at the quality of that lamb. That is perfect. If I do say so myself. And we had such great memories filming all the fresh market update stuff. 
such a big crew we've all came like sort of family by the end of it last year it was 18 weeks 18 fantastic locations different farmers and producers and like i say this was up in scotland um just an amazing experience and to get to meet the people that produce this lamb something else and also it shows a little bit of lamb can go a long way so buy some good quality meat you don't necessarily need a full steak each just a few slices is enough to really feed a crowd like that quality over quantity every day for me when it comes to meat and then our pickled red onions we have to put them on the top for a bit of color and a bit of zing And I've even got a little bit of wine to go with this tonight. Let's chuck that on there. These are game changer, these pickled red onions. They go on top of pretty much anything. If you make a curry on the top of that, just add them to salads. You'll find once you've got a jar and they're in the fridge, they'll start to go on just about everything that you cook. And wines tonight, we've got two. So we've got this Cabernet Sauvignon, £7.50 from the M&S Gold Label range. And this one, a bit of Merlot. And did you know all M&S wine, M&S branded wine, is vegan? I mean, the lamb flatbread isn't vegan, but it's a little fun fact for you. I think I'll go for a bit of the Merlot with that. And I think the key for wine is to go for what you like. And if you're not sure what you like, when you've drank it, read the back of the bottle because they tell you the sort of flavor profiles. So that way, if you drink something, you realize, hmm, that's what I like the taste of. That's what you need to ask for when you're in a restaurant. Something smooth and fruity, ripe and plummy. And now you've got your Merlot, so mm. cheers to that. And the fresh market update, meltingly tender lamb flatbreads. Anyone interested in the crew and a bit of food tonight? Yeah. Well, come and grab some. While I'm diving into that, I've got to give you a reminder that the competition is almost closed. But if you still want to get involved, for your chance to win a £50 e-card, just let us know your favourite M&S food product that you bought in April and you're being a chance to win. I've got a little extra bonus for you tonight. Another recipe, this is not one that we sent out the ingredients for. This is something for you to try later in the week, but because asparagus is in season and I've been to the Y Valley uh, to meet the Chin family farmers, legends, I thought I'll do a little asparagus recipe that we did last year, give you a bit of inspiration. You'll be able to watch all of this back on the MNS YouTube channel for your dinner inspo later in the week, so. Oh, an Good Easter job. egg, because I haven't had enough Easter eggs, j just for one. Have you had that in your pocket? It's, it's almost melted, that one. Your hands are warm. Your hands are warm. Oh, you've really made that appetizing for me tonight. He's had it cupped in his warm hands. Mm. Oh. Not just any Easter egg, that is it, Reese? M&S Easter egg. M&S Easter egg, very good, right. So this next one. Truffle cream cheese and asparagus tagliatelle literally a few ingredients and again it's all about the quality of the ingredients that you're using so let's get our frying pan on so a medium heat here you can add a bit of garlic to this if you really want to or anything like that frying pan is on we've got our asparagus which i'll show you how to prep and this was one of the best experiences i had in the y valley last year to meet the chin family farmers father and son the sheer passion they have for asparagus is unbelievable. And one thing I always said to the farmers when I met them is, how do you like to eat the food that you grow? And they both give a different answer. So the king asparagus, the big thick uh, spears, he said so many people think they're going to be woody and a bit inedible, but he said it's completely the opposite because you've got more flesh to skin ratio. So it means you've got more sugars in there and the sugars can caramelize. So he said every single night when they're in season, I cut them in half lengthways oil a bacon tray, lie them down flat, and just roast them in a hot oven, and the base of that asparagus just goes so sweet, and you almost get this nutty flavor. And his son said every night, he just does really simple, and also you'll notice here to prep the asparagus, there's a natural breaking point. Let's grab another one. There's a natural breaking point, and this is the bit you want to discard, because that is the woody end, and you just snap it off. But he said he would just snap the ends off, big frying pan, splash of oil, a little bit of butter, pop them in, touch of salt and pepper, and put them on the table. And the kids would eat them like 
sweets. And another thing I learned about asparagus is that it grows in 24 hours. So the spear comes up, and then every day it gets chopped off, and then you get another spear of asparagus every single day, which is amazing. So we prep these up, snap off them. We've got some pasta water boiling here, which we'll do our fresh tagliatelle. Quick note, the competition is now closed and I'll reveal the winner later on. Okay, so we can discard the woody ends into our water. This is so quick, I'm gonna do all this in real time. Season your pasta water, because that's gonna season the pasta and make everything taste better. I've got to say, that Merlot is great. Mm. Fresh pasta, cooks in a few minutes. Let's drop that into our boiling water. Get the heat up a little bit on there. A couple of nests per person generally. Small handful. I'll do quite a bit because there's a big crew here. And then we've got our frying pan on. And our asparagus, just cut it into sort of bite-sized pieces. Whatever you could get into your mouth like that on the end of a fork. Like I say, you can add a bit of garlic, something like that in here if you want to. But for me, it's all about the asparagus. And I think the key thing is, when the product is this good, you really don't need to do much to it whatsoever. Okay, splash of oil, extra virgin olive oil. I'm just on a medium heat here. I wouldn't fry in a really high heat, but it's gonna add a lovely flavor and we'll save a little bit more to drizzle on at the end as well. Let's get the heat of our pasta up. Any questions tonight as well, do get them in. Mm. How's the lamb flatbreads, everyone? Awesome. Oh, well, there you go. Music to my ears. If anyone's made them tonight, tag us in your pictures. Get them on social media. I can't wait to have a look at your cook-ups. So that's our pasta in. You don't have to use tagliatelle. You can use whatever your favorite pasta is. That's on the go. Now, asparagus into our oil. You want to hear a sizzle. And the last thing you want to do is overcook the asparagus because it's going to lose its crunch, it's going to lose its colour. Let's get a bit more in there. Touch of salt and pepper can go in with it. But this really is the ultimate speedy weeknight dinner with just a few simple ingredients. Touch of salt goes in. Touch of pepper. And th this is what I love about M&S. When the quality is that good, you don't have to mess with things. So you've got your asparagus. Then you can head to your chilled island, get the truffle cream cheese, which I'll talk a bit more now about. Let's get the lid off there, don't let that boil over. Just think of cream cheese with black truffle on it, and it's incredibly generous with the black truffle. Big chunks of it in there, let's get in there and have a look. I mean, this is great with some scrambled eggs. It's lovely on some toast, and it's a touch of luxury. Uh, to be honest, a really reasonable price as well. So let's just have a little look at this truffle cream cheese. Can we see that? You'll see the flecks. Oh, there we go. There's little flecks of black truffle in there. It's not like an essence, it's real black truffle. This is a clean spoon, by the way. I'm going to try a bit of that. Mmm. That. Just, you can't help. It just puts a smile on your face. Mm. Asparagus cooking away nicely. Touch more seasoning on there. We can take the heat down on the pasta now. It really is this quick and easy. Then into here, just a splash of our pasta water because we're going to create a little sauce with our cream cheese. So that goes in. We're going to create some steam and the water will emulsify into a sauce with the fat from our cream cheese that goes into there. Nice big blob of that. We can take the heat right down on the asparagus now and just gently start to stir it through. Mm. I mean the smell of the truffle as well. When it gets into the hot pan, the truffle comes to life. And then we grab our tongs and we can just lift our pasta straight into the asparagus. No need to drain it or anything like that. Just go straight in with a bit of its water. 
Mm. And Sue would like to know, can you fry asparagus in butter rather than oil? Absolutely. It's a really nice thing to do. And Chris, one of the farmers actually did that. He would just fry butter, salt and pepper. And that is just a simple, simple side or even a main. Just some really good asparagus. Look at the color in there as well, because we haven't overcooked it. We've kept all the green and retained all of that. Nutrition in the asparagus as well. A touch more, I say touch, I've gone through the full pot. I mean, struggle to find anyone I know that doesn't like this truffle cream cheese. Just stir it through. And it's just making its own sauce. So that water from the pasta mixed with the cream cheese and asparagus, and it's still so vibrant and green. Mm. And we've done both of these recipes in real time tonight. So it can be that quick and easy to rustle something up for your dinner. Where's our lemon? Touch your lemon zest if you want. I like that contrast, a bit of freshness. And we can add a tiny bit of lemon juice in here. You can add Parmesan if you've got it, raid the fridge. A little squeeze of lemon. And the reason I like the lemon is just a bit of acidity to cut through the richness of the truffle cream cheese. And then that is pretty much ready to plate up. So off with the heat. Mm. And you can see the way we've created a sauce there. It's just clinging to the pasta. Mm. And it smells incredible. Let's get all of our bit more asparagus on. Any leftovers of this, chuck it in your lunchbox cold the next day. Delicious pasta salad. Oh yeah. Little spear on the top. I'll do another one. Bit more of that. Again, go away and make this and you can watch all of this back on the MS YouTube channel for your dinner later this week. And you could add other veggies into this as well if you want to do like a three veg pasta. Just follow the same principles, get the truffle cream cheese. And the key is not to overcook the veg because there's not worse than a bit of soggy veg. That goes on there. I'm going to grab a bit of rocket out of the fridge. Where's me rocket? Here we go. Just to top it off a little bit like that. A little more squeeze of lemon juice on there. Mm. Drizzle of the extra virgin olive oil. Not just any olive oil. M&S olive oil. On we go. Maybe a touch of pepper. And there you have it. A little weeknight dinner or even a weekend meal with a glass of wine if you've got your friends coming over. Truffle, cream cheese and asparagus pasta. Let's have a little go on that. Mm. Oh, all I can say is you're going to love it. I've got a couple of questions coming in there. How do you know when asparagus is cooked? So really by the feel of it and the color. So it still wants to be vibrant and green. And when you say cut into it or put your fork into it, you can almost still hear that crunch. Or if you cut it with a knife, it should still be nice and firm. You don't want it to be all cooked down and wilted, if that makes sense. Um, what's this question here from Tom? Why don't you use olive oil to cook with? Because we have the temperature quite low, you can cook with an extra virgin olive oil. If I was on a higher temperature, I would use a regular olive oil or a veg oil because it has a higher smoking point, but because we didn't take the temperature too high, we're only really warming through that asparagus. We weren't sort of going into a high, high heat. Any other questions here? One from Mark. What is the best? Parmesan, easy question. Any Parmesan you can buy in M&S? Simple one. Right, there we go. Have we got the winner of the competition ready to go? And our winner is Alison Smith. Congratulations, voucher on its way to you. Let us know what you spend your 50 pounds on, hopefully in the food hall. And I mean, two fantastic recipes. Oh, let's bring the lamb flatbreads back in if there's any left to showcase up at the end. All right, Reese is eating half of that, but there you go. That's our lamb flatbread. 
and this is our truffle cream cheese tagliatelle pasta and don't forget we've got the gluten free option as well with the breads if you have a gluten intolerance this is delicious with a bit of cheese on there even just great as a side if you do and I tell you what a bit of that and a bit of that pasta is going to go well regardless if you're gluten free or not because it is a really good product we've got our two wines both at £7.50 fun fact all the M&S branded wine is vegan I've gone for the Merlot from the Gold Label collection. And I've got to say a massive thanks for joining in. If you've made anything, tag us in your pictures and we'll see you very soon for another Sparks Live. Cheers.